You do not want to zoom in on this face cam. Nah, you don't want none of that. Hey, Pinnacle Studio peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. If you've ever wanted to take your full screen and scale it down to a PIP or a face cam somewhere on the screen, or maybe you wanted to take a PIP or a face cam and blow that up or zoom it in so that it fills in the screen. If you've ever wanted to do that, I'm gonna show you how to get that done today, all right? So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the program and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. Now, as you can see, I have two clips down in the timeline. The clip on the bottom is a clip of an individual getting into a car. And then the clip on the top is a clip of an individual jogging. Now, keep in mind the clip on the top is always going to be the clip that is visible in Pinnacle Studio 20. So, what I'm going to be concentrating on is this top clip and creating a PIP using that clip. And then you'll see the clip that's underneath it behind it. So as you all know, in Pinnacle Studio 20, there's now this PIP function that you can enable here. But unfortunately, you can't use this to zoom in and zoom out because you can't add keyframes. It is only a a uh, way to change the properties of the clip. So we're not gonna be using that. What I am gonna do is right click on the clip that's on top. Go to Open Effects Editor. Go to 2D, 3D. Click on the arrow on the side and then go to Studio PIP. So when I click on this, you see all of the Studio PIP options are available here. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go to the select preset and I'm going to place the PIP window where I want it. So I'm going to do bottom right corner. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable keyframes by clicking on the turn on off keyframing button. Now what keyframes do is they allow us to move things, animate things, create motion, uh, move our clips all over the place, all kind of good stuff. But for today, what we're going to be using it for is changing the position and the scale or the size of the clip. So my playhead is all the way over on the left and you'll see that now because I turned the keyframes on, there is a keyframe here at the beginning of the clip. This keyframe represents the position and the size of where this clip is right now and any other parameters that I would change. But right now it's just the position and the size. So those are the only things that are changed. Everything else is still set to zero. As you can see here, the size is 40 and the horizontal and the vertical are 20 and negative 20 respectively. So now I'm going to move the playhead to a new position. And what I'm going to do here is add another keyframe. So what I've done now is I've added a keyframe at the same position and size as the first one. So you can see nothing's changed at this position. So what that means is that between this position and this position, everything will stay where it's at. So now I'm going to place a keyframe at, or I'm going to move my playhead to the end of this timeline. And I'm going to change the size to 100. That's for the width and the height. And then I'm going to change the position to zero 
for the horizontal and vertical. So what that means is now I have full screen of this other clip. So what I've done is when I created those parameters or changed them, a new keyframe was automatically made because Pinnacle Studio knows, hey, you're changing the parameters, you have keyframes on, so once you're changing things, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new keyframe where your playhead is, where you're making the changes. So let me drag my playhead across here, and you'll see that after I hit this keyframe, it's gonna start sizing itself up and scaling up, and when I get to the last keyframe, it should be full screen. Now, if I click on OK, it'll send it to the timeline and it'll render it. If you were to play this right now, it would probably be very laggy because it hasn't finished rendering yet. So, and you can tell already it's a little bit laggy, a little bit playing behind a little bit, like it's not scaling up yet, and it should be, but it's because it hasn't rendered yet. But if I were to just drag my playhead, it'll stay up to speed. So that's how you go from a PIP window to full screen. Uh, if you wanted to go full screen to a PIP window, you just kind of do the opposites. So you make your first keyframe. The regular size. And you would make your next keyframe match that one. What I'll do this time is I'll just remove this keyframe by clicking on the delete keyframe button. And then I'll right click on this keyframe and do copy keyframe. Place my playhead where I want. Right click and do paste keyframe. And now for this last one, I'll just change it to the size that I want. And so now what will happen is it'll start off full screen. And as I drag my playhead across here, you'll see that once I hit the second keyframe, it's going to start to go down to a PIP window. Right? If I wanted it to do faster, then I could create another. Let's just copy this one. You paste it here. And now it's going to change to a PIP window really fast because the keyframes are closer together. So there you go. And now I have it staying at this size for the rest of the video. So you could do that as well. All kinds of different ways you can go about doing it. It's really up to you. But that, my friends, is how it's done. So now you just click on OK. And as you can tell, it will go ahead and render out the changes that you made. And you're good to go with your PIP zooming or PIP scaling window. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm done. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps. I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. Now, if you like the content that I'm bringing to you, make sure that you click on the thumb that's pointed in the upward direction. It tells other people that the content in this video is good and they should watch it too so that they can get the same benefit out of it that you got out of it. If you got any questions, comments, tutorial requests, or you just want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash the subscribe button. When you smash the subscribe button, you receive notifications from YouTube whenever I upload content. And that means you won't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.